When I was about 12, we took our first trip into the Boundary Waters. I remember just being so awestruck by the beauty of these wilderness lakes, the serenity, the, the peacefulness that one can find here. You know, you fall into a routine when you're traveling by a canoe. You paddle during the day and then you set up camp and you make a meal, and life is simple. There are hundreds and hundreds of miles of these canoe trails that allow you to to explore the wilderness, it's over a million acres. When you come to a place like this, I think it gives you a new appreciation for why clean air and fresh water and wild spaces are important. Nancy and I have been here since we came in 1976 to work for EPA on a science project and we uh, just fell in love with this little spot here as kind of a, a gem in the middle of the wilderness and uh, we've been here ever since. Uh, I run a business called Paragus Northwoods Company. We're a canoe outfitter and retailer and cataloger and we have a bookstore and our little shop on Main Street here in Ely. Ely's economy is based on this uh, location. It's really about this place. It's about the wilderness nearby and the beauty of the landscape around us. It's canoe country. That's what we called it when I was a kid. When my dad had his business, we were the center of a lot of activity. He was the largest canoe outfitter, actually in the world, as it turned out. And so as we worked in the store as little kids and growing up as teenagers, we heard all these tales of people from all over the United States and all over the world who wanted to tell you about the experience they had, that it was a very special place. Many individuals, men and women, worked tirelessly to protect this place. This area has a history of differences and, in a sense, battles over the fate of this wilderness area. when we worry about sulfide ore mining in the watershed of the Boundary Waters. The prime worry is about acid leaching into the lakes and destroying the ecology. Sulfide mining is a type of mining that the EPA rates as the most polluting industry in America. They're proposing to put that right up against a wilderness area that is the most beloved and heavily visited wilderness area in America. The mining district, if they develop this to the point that they're talking, is gonna be a stretch, could be five miles wide by 20 miles long, it would encompass all of the South Cushway River, all of Birch Lake. Directly out in front, a quarter of a mile out in front of my property here, we're going to have a tunnel underneath the lake. What would be the cumulative effects of one mine, two mines, three mines, maybe five mines within our watershed, all potentially secreting sulfates and sulfuric acid into that watershed and heavy metals? Uh, we pride ourselves in the pristine purity of this watershed, one of the best in the country. Maybe we need to dig deeper and find out what this means for us and for the next generation. My husband Dave and I are traveling about 2,000 miles from Ely, Minnesota to Washington, D.C. And you might notice that the canoe is covered in signatures, so people from all over the U.S. who are concerned are signing the canoe. On August 24th, we had a little gathering of folks near Voyager Outward Bound School, which is right on the Kwishwe River. Really our goal of this journey is to tell people all across the country about this amazing place, the most popular wilderness area in the country. This doesn't belong just to us, the people living here in northeastern Minnesota. This is a national wilderness and everyone across the country needs to know what a special place this is and they need to become defenders as well. I was moved to tears actually by the number of people who showed up and paddled with us for the first mile. I can't write. <laughs> 
So we took off from the Kwishwi River and we headed along the border route through the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. To the north of us, we have the Quetico Provincial Park, and on the south side, we've got the Boundary Waters Canary Wilderness. So, over two million acres put together of this roadless wilderness, just a maze of lakes and rivers and streams. It's a paddler's paradise. No other place like it on Earth. Not many places where you can just drink right out of the lake. It's about 150 miles to travel along the border, and we'll get to Grand Portage soon. So the Grand Portage is an eight and a half mile trail leading from the Boundary Waters basically down to Lake Superior. We have portage about six and a half miles and we estimate that we have about two more miles to go. So we're three quarters of the way done with the Grand Portage. It's a long one, it's a muddy one. From Lake Superior, we'll put the signature canoe onto our sailboat, Yamaya, and we'll sail it along the north shore of Lake Superior to Duluth, and then along the south shore, and then after about 600 miles of sailing, we'll switch back to canoeing, and we'll canoe up the French River and down the Mattawa and the Ottawa River to Ottawa and Montreal. We'll paddle south into Lake Champlain, down the Hudson River to New York City, and then eventually all the way to DC. And it'll take us about 100 days. All along the way, we're setting up events and communities to do presentations and tell people about the Boundary Waters and why it's so important and why it needs to be protected. Hey!